I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to, of course, that's not a podcast. Once again, I'm Josh Shivanoff. As always, welcome by the one and only man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, future jiu-jitsu world champion, Angel Ortega. we got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Uh, UFC had a card go down. Uh, they're having another one go down in Brazil. It's not, it's not, it's not, it, it's okay. You know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Uh, we also got a bunch of news as always. Um, real quickly, we are brought to you by two sponsors of the show, Rogue Energy and Elixir. Rogue Energy. Get me filled up no matter where I'm at, whether I'm at home, at the gym, or doing the show. They get me to the finish line. They can help you as well. Code sound off at checkout. Code sound off for 10% off all caps at checkout. Elixir, they're going to get you really high with their Delta 8 products. Also, code sound off all caps, 10% off at checkout. Again, Rogue Energy and Elixir, code sound off. Well, said it. Last Saturday night, you see hell of card. UC Apex, <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada. Is this not your favorite venue in combat sports history, John? Uh, it's up there with the Yama uh, fight pit. I'm a big fan of the the Yama. You know, what know was the, what was the place they were gonna fight in in in, in the uh, Native American reservation? Oh shit, the Tachi Palace. <laughs> the Tachi the, Palace. They had some Bellator shows there. The Tachi Palace back in the day, bro. I mean, you know what a letdown that we never got to experience Tachi Palace during COVID. Honestly, dude, I think about that all the time. I'm like, damn, like MMA is a cool sport, but it would have been better if we had the Tachi Palace involved. What know? if Tachi Palace would have became the UFC Apex? What if the Tachi Palace bought out the UFC and then started no. running shows entirely in the Tachi Palace? No. Anyway, so we got a card. That just that just that little tangent just shows you. Uh, you just had it ruined, Josh. Yeah, it's all I, I know it's all my fault. Uh, anyway, so UFC card did happen. If 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 you but there's a question. If UFC card happens and nobody talks about it, did it really happen? Yes. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So in the main event of UFC Vegas '91, Alex Perez, who look, dude, a straight up dog. I mean, he had he took he had like seven straight canceled fights or some shit. I think nine. Yeah, it was something crazy. And not all of them were his fault, but a fair bit of them were. Fought Muhammad Makayev last last month, I believe, um, or two months ago now. Lost. Came back, stepped up a short notice, and he gets a knockout win over Mateus Nicolau. Beautiful. Left hook crumples him against the cage. Alex Perez getting the win. And, and not only did he get the win, he's already scheduled his next fight. Um, he's going to be coming back here against Tiger Olimbekov in June. You're talking about a guy, former title challenger, 32 years old. He thinks he can make a run right now, Angel. What do you think? Dude, not even just that. Already, Josh, in advance, DTF Fighter of the Week. We have not given this award out in a while. I really don't Well, you know something? We should have given it out to Max Holloway. We fucked up there. That's true. Max Holloway, if, if for, for just for the sake of argument, he was our UFC 300 uh, DTF Fighter of the Week. Let's be honest. There was really no other pick I could have gone. Maybe Jim Miller, but I mean. Jim, or he was, Yeah, you're not yeah, wrong. But outside of that, I mean, it's it's one of those two. This week, there is no question. Alex Perez is DTF, down to fight. Fighter of the week. Exactly. No doubt, man. What did, what did you make about his performance? Good. I mean, he, a very similar finish to Alex Perez. I don't know if you saw those uh, highlights on Twitter that people were comparing, but it was a little little reminiscent, you know, not the same. There was, you know, he didn't have like the cold stop, you know, he's like, wait a second, I got this. You know? He didn't, he didn't get a bullshit win over Jamal Hill is what you're saying. <laughs> he didn't get a bullshit win. Oh, yeah, there's those people out there, but we don't got to get it. If Justin <laughs> Gaethje's nose didn't break, you know? and, and if he didn't get his nose broken, then he would have won the fight. Nah, yeah, like, we don't got to go on this tangent. No, I know. I know. Go ahead. But, I mean, good for him. Older guy beating a younger up-and-comer who's uh, gone in a few wins here, obviously suffered a few losses. I feel, I, I, man, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in Matisse Nicolau because when he's stepped up against that, like, next level of competition, he hasn't been able to break through. We talked about this before. Brandon Roy Ball. Alex Perez now, and he's had another few in there too, if I remember right, that just didn't go his way. And uh, for Alex Perez, man, look, the people he's lost to are what? Um, Davison Figueredo, uh, uh, Pantoja, Pantoja, and then Muhammad Makayev. In recent time, you know, that's not a bad. Oh, and back at a year, several years ago, now, back just, to 2018, Joseph Benavidez, another dog. You know, he's only lost to some of the best in this division. And Josh, I don't know if you saw this, but something insane happened. Alex yeah. Perez is ranked ahead of Mohamed Makayev after just losing to Mohamed Makayev. Yeah. Drama oh, oh in the God. 125 Oh, my division. God, Angel. Do you see that? Do you see that right there? 
Alex Tachi Perez Dallas was flyweight champion <laughs> at one time. Holy shit, that's kind of insane. That's, that's actually fucking hilarious. Right, I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, Alex Perez, former Tachi Palace flyweight champion, ranked ahead of Maham Makayev. It's because he had the power of that belt still back at home. It's the only reason. <laughs> Anyways. I was going to make a crazy joke. But I had to stop. Okay. I think we'll talk about it off air. Anyways, yeah, Maham Makayev. I mean, that's a... That's a but look, here's the issue. You see rankings don't make any fucking sense. That at any point in time, the only thing that tells me is that the UC does not rank him highly. Like the UC internally, they don't give a fuck. Because like I don't, I know that they say they're done by the media, but I don't know a single media guy. Well, there's that, a good chance now that Alex Perez might get a title shot before Muhammad Makayev, which would be so funny. Like I, honestly, they're really fucking Makayev hard here. I don't know why. I don't know what he did. Um, I don't know what he did to deserve this. I mean, he's, I, he's young. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter. I think is the other thing. Like. Yeah. So be it. And he's down to fight. You know, he's trying to look for an opponent right now. I think he even might have said there's one already done. Like, there's a done deal. Like, he already has one set for uh, whenever the England mm-hmm. card happens. Uh, though this one did throw me for the loop. I didn't expect him to go past Muhammad Makayev in their rankings. Yeah, I mean, I I don't like it. Um, but I, I, I guess I kind of get it because Nikolau is ranked, like, number five. So it's it's one of those things where you want to give him that spot. But also at the same time, it's like we just he could have been right behind Muhammad Nakayev and it would have been perfectly fair. Yeah. At the same time, though, we also saw two weeks ago Max Holloway knock out Justin Gaethje and be put ranked number nine. On top of that, you could have moved both forward. Yeah, you know, you could have yeah. put Mamakayev up to four, Perez the five, Kaikara yeah. fall to six. Yeah. I mean, it's just because yeah. why the fuck is Kaikara France still up there? I mean, why do we, what are we, what are we doing here? You know? Yeah. Um, he's been out of action for a while. I wonder when he's going to come back. Been out of action for a while. He's lost two in a row. Yeah, two in a row. Uh, Albazi and Moreno. So yeah, mm-hmm. I don't even, doesn't even make sense. Yeah, I mean the UFC rankings are terrible. I'm not. This is like the least surprising part of of this, honestly, of like this week, I guess. I think Dana, didn't Dana say they're made by the media or in part by the media? All right. Here's the thing. They are made by the media, but how are the rankings determined? Okay. So here, here are – This is the website definition from the official UFC.com website. Yeah. So basically, they're just saying here's the rankings. They're voted on by the media. A fighter can appear in more than one weight division at a time, yada, yada, yada. Okay? Here's who the media – Who here's, here's, here's who it comes from. You guys, you guys know the media in MMA. I mean, we're talking about MMA fighting, MMA junkie, BJPenn.com, which is the best of all of those. Uh, you know, sports, Kita, stuff like that, right? MMA here here's who makes up the ranks. MMA odds breaker. CFMU 93.3. Bucksrack dot S E Fight News. Fight Network. Gazita Asportia. Cherokee Scout. Burbank Leader. MMA Weekly. KIOZ 105.3. Vladusport.com. Wrestling Observer. Top Turtle Podcast. MMA Fight Coverage. Boxio Mondel, Kimura.se, MMA Soldier, MMA NYTT, Blood and Sweat, and, and, and Inside Fighting Radio. Do you know more than, for the record, I just looked up Barats.se, one of the websites listed, is not a current fucking webpage. By the way, what is that turtle, what is that, MMA Turtle? Top Turtle Podcast. I've never, have you ever, I've never heard of those guys. I, hate... I think they follow me on Twitter. But I don't think I've heard of them. No offense to them. No offense to the top tier. Because I mean, shit. If you guys want to go, ahead. I mean, I mean, they, they haven't heard of us. But you know, it is it is what it is. Yeah, it's hosted by my guy Gumby. They got five thousand followers. So that's something. You know, hmm. so that's that's not bad. But yeah, I mean, look, dude. I mean, I, they don't give a. I don't even know if half, half of these people are real. You know what I mean? Because I just looked <laughs> up. I just looked up one of the sites that they had listed, and it's not a website. You it's, think they're AI, AI generated? I think maybe at one point in time these were real sites, but like they're not anymore. Let's try Kimura.se. Are they real? Yeah. They are real. All right. Props to them. Anyways, so I don't know who the fuck these people are that make up the rankings. Um, I don't know anybody that does them. I mean, I wouldn't say the rankings are terrible, but at times there there is a few like movements that are questionable in my opinion, like this one where I thought like I think it would have been perfectly justified to do what I think I, I just said or put him right below my guy. It's just weird for a guy to be ahead of a guy he just lost to literally the fight before months ago. Yeah. I think it'd be different if he would have be, you know, Moreno, Albazi, uh, you know, Roy Ball, whoever's ahead like that. 
I just and, and I, I get I guess I do understand Mateus Nikolai was ranked ahead of him, but it, I just it's also the fact that Makaya was literally ahead of him too, and just and he just lost him. This this one is a bit puzzling to me. So yeah. be it. I mean, it's 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 not like I mean like it's not like the rankings matter a lot anyways. If you're catching my drift there, but they don't matter at all. Yeah, I mean they don't even, they don't even follow their own rankings. So I don't really. I mean, it it is what it is. I don't really give a fuck about it. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and go down to the co-main event, man. Um, oh my god, for what page of work, dude? Anthony Smith picks up a third win over Ryan Span. Uh, Bogdan Kuskov knocks out Ryan Spann in the second round. These two were fucking... The first round was kind of meh. I mean, Ryan took him down, got his back. Yeah, Bogdan was fighting from behind a little bit. Yeah, Bogdan. But round two, he comes out, rocks him. Ryan Spann, rather than clinching, going for a takedown, he's like, fuck it, I'm going out on my shield. Starts swinging and banging, ends up getting caught again, ends up losing by knockout. I mean, look, I'll give uh, Superman Spann this. Went out on his fucking shield. <laughs> hey, man, you know what? Hey, I called this one. I'm happy about that. We got one right this week. No? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, tell, so, yeah, tell, fuck you, Josh. Nice <laughs> <laughs> tell me about this one, man. To be honest, we fumbled the bag. We probably could have picked Alex Perez last week. Yeah, probably. I mean, we, we debated about it. It was close. But, yeah, man. I mean, good win. Good win for Bogdan. I mean, I mean, good finish in the rankings now, right? Yep. Number 12, I believe. Which is crazy. He went up that pie. Yeah. Uh, without being ranked, and Ryan Spann, no disrespect, somehow still in the rankings. And and you know what's crazy? He is now behind Dominic Reyes, who he beat a year ago. So that's just another example. Is Ryan Spann on a losing streak, or did he have one in between? Uh, I feel no, he lost to Anthony Smith last August. Oh yeah, you're right. So two in a row, two in a row. And yeah. I think they had the Dom Reyes right before, right? Oh, he had Nikita Krylov. He knocked out Dom Reyes November twelfth. So, 12th, so I, I, and I hate to say this, Josh. But I don't know how a guy can be ranked in the top fifteen and be on a three fight losing streak. Um, well, Dominic Reyes is top ranked in the top fifteen, and he's on a four. Well, dude, there, there was multiple yeah. fighters like Michelle Waters. Dude, at one point, dude, Michelle Waters has lost so many fucking fights in a row. I don't even. Is Michelle Waters even ranked? If, if Michelle Waters is ranked, I mean, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, Angel. She's fourteen. She's ranked number fourteen in the UFC's best women's weight class. She is 18 and 12 now. She Okay, so she lost to Marina Rodriguez, beat the shit out of her. Lost to Luana Panero. Lost to Amanda Lino. That's three in a row. Okay, how far are we at? Okay, she lost the first time to uh, Rodriguez. Close fight. She's lost four in a row. That's not as bad as I thought it was actually going to be. But but can you go back more? I think there's another and loss. And she, she lost to Carlos Barza. She lost to Joanna. She beat Carolina. She beat Fleece Herring. But she's like, what? Like, she's According one in six or some shit like she's that? She's like one in six in her last seven fights, yeah. I think she just booked a fight, too. I think you're right. Uh... Oh, my God, dude. Okay, yeah. Let's see. Oh, she... Jillian Robertson. That's, that's actually a good matchup. Yeah, dude. They're fighting for 15th and 14th. Dude, in the uh, jokes aside, that's a that's a. I that's mean, it's a good, good matchup. That's Don't get me fight. wrong, but you know what I'm getting. Look, yeah. dude, she's already she's already doing some other stuff. Okay, she's she was in a fight. She was in a movie two years ago. She got another one coming up. Michelle Washington's looking for the door. If we're being honest, you know. I'm surprised she hasn't stepped away. I think she has every right to. I always think about this story. Um. So there was a guy. You remember when she was on Bully Beatdown? Bully beatdown. Oh, classic. Dude. Is that what it was called? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was called. Yeah, she was on, um, not she was on, when she fought in Kansas City, uh, my mom knew a guy who worked at the T Mobile Center. And I guess, like, her kid was, like, crying the whole night in, 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 in like, shrieking bloody murder when she got fucked up by Rose Nami Yunus. I forgot how that fight happened. Yeah, dude. Uh, brutal, brutal. But anyways, um, yeah, I mean, back to Vegas 91. I mean, this is a card that happened. I mean, uh, outside of the light heavyweight co-main, I mean, the main card had some other good fights, too. I mean, Kareem Silva picking up a, a win over Ariana Lipsky. Um, that happened. Uh, Austin Lane losing again, man. It, dude, when he was – it brutal. looked like he was about to win, too. I know. Brutal knockout win for Jahan to – how the fuck do you pronounce this guy's name? Denise? Janita. Janita Denise. Denise. Janita. Janita. Janata. Wow. Janata. There's, no, there's no I in there. What Janata a name on that guy. It. Okay. Anyways. David Onama, uh, JSP, got robbed for fight of the night. They put up a banger, dude, at the end there. People were making fun of them, but I'm like, dude, you need to also take into account, like, Jonathan Pierce was behind, and he decided to make the decision to put make the fight like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you could call it, uh, what they, they were calling a Walmart just in case you versus Max Conway, but I'm like, think about the moment, though. Yeah. Like, 
Max had already won. Like it's also like I was saying, but Jonathan Pierce is losing and he makes the decision to stand and bang and he's getting rocked too yeah. in that fight. I mean, I respect the fuck out of that dude. I was like, yes, yes, JSP, yes, yeah. goddamn it. Yeah, dude. I, I don't. I, people are like, oh, it's, it's it's the Walmart version, like you said. But it's like, man, you know what? That's just a cool moment. I'm not gonna shit. That's a sick moment, dude. Yeah, and they got robbed for fight of the night. Feel bad for those. Who guys. ended up getting fight of the night? Nobody. They just gave out uh, four bonuses instead. Oh, that's bullshit. Yeah. Russo Medic knocking the fuck out of Tim Means. Brutal. I, was, I will say this, Josh. I looked at Tim Means at Tim Means come out out of the tunnel, and I knew it was over then. <laughs> Are you serious, dude? Yes, I knew Tim Means was gonna lose this anyways. I had to some like we had to, if we would. Oh yeah, picked, I mean if yeah, I would have picked Euros too, but but uh, dude, Tim Means uh, came out with the you know the dad bod. <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't say fair. dad bod, but he looked. He just looks. His age. Dude, they're, they're going to cut his ass after that one, I think. Well, they should. I don't want Tim Means getting knocked out ever again. Yeah. I mean, but also, he was like, during fight week, he was like, talking about like the bonuses. He's like, you guys raised him up. You can't put him back down. That's not fair. Was, like, <laughs> do you know Dana was backstage just fucking like, oh, buddy, if you win this one, you're going to fight fucking Chamayev next or some shit, you know? Like, Probably. Uh, but yeah, shout out the Dirty Bird. Uh, shout out Euros. Man, just perfect uppercut as he was dipping into it, too. I feel like I feel like uppercuts just aren't valued enough in MMA. I don't know why, but you get some slick ones every once in a while, you know. <laughs> uh, Victor Henry knocking out the the finally looking his age, Ronnie Yaya. I mean, uh, brutal. brutal. He's like, his hair is thinning, dude. Dude, he, he looks. He's he's fucking old, man. I mean, he's thirty nine, but he looks like he's living. Dude, this guy was in the WEC, man. I forget how long he's been around. Jesus Christ. Fought Chase BB for the for the fucking fought in K one too, dude. Right there, yeah, dude. The guy fought in Heroes. He was a Jungle Fight two, <laughs> his second ever Jungle Fight in two thousand and four. Crazy, yeah. This guy, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, but shout out Victor Henry though. Good win. Um, Austin Hubbard picking up a win. Love to see it. Dante Mays, that fight happened. Um, Ketlin Souza defeating uh, Marnik Man, solid win. Chris Padilla getting the stoppage win. Uh, Iviana Petro, uh, Petrovic getting a stoppage as well. And Mahashate picking up a split decision winner, Gabe, Gabe Benitez. Uh, entertaining fight. Entertaining fight. Yeah, it was, it was all right. Feel bad a little bit for, for Mowgli. You know, that's two or three in a row, I want to say, at this point. Um, so that one's a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, two in a row, excuse me. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see where both those guys go from there. But it was a, it was a fun fight. It was an okay card. You know, it was, it was it got it got us through the week a little bit, you know? Yeah, it was bang on average. That's what I put it as. I mean, I like seeing flyweights in the main event just, just because it's so rare. What would you rank this card out of 10? Fucking six, six. Oh, dude, you're nice. I was, I, you know, usually I'm the nice guy. I was going to give it like a fucking four. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the main card. I thought the main card had a lot of value. But watching those prelims, like, and I was just like... Like I just got just got off of work. Like I was just. I mean, it was right, dude. Them, I mean, it's know? just like Austin Lane, Kareem Silva fight in the main event. I feel like Victor Henry, or, you know, uh, Ronnie Yaya, just there's to be in there. Maybe in my opinion, uh, Mowgli and Mahashate were another ones that could have been in there, and I think that would have been a great. Main, I mean, you look how that those fights went, and it would have been perfect in the main card. I fully agree with you. It was definitely a card that happened, and I and I don't want to like. I, sometimes I think I'm too harsh on Apex cards, which is hilarious. But like, because this week I was the one who threw down a hammer. Exactly. Yeah. But like, at the same time, dude, I don't give a shit about a lot of this card. Like, um, it was it was a six out you know, of ten. You know, you know how we'll get this opinion like settled. We need to ask CM Bear for the fans. They can't see CM Bear right now. We're going to CM Bear. CM Bear. CM Bear. Exactly. No response. No response. Just just like the crowd noise there. But by the way, dude, I saw that. Damn. There was, I saw that they did have like people in attendance, were, like thirty people, and like those seats. Here's the here's the other part about the Apex where it trips me up, like. They're like the worst UFC cards you could imagine being put on, but also those tickets are like a thousand dollars a seat or some shit. They're like really expensive, so it's like it's like, dude, you guys, you're paying out the ass for Alex Perez and Mateus Nicolau in the main event. It's like, man, which mean it was a good fight. It was no, that was a good fight. But two rounds, it was good. Yeah, but anyways, man. But Josh, we're on to the best card of the oh, year, yeah, man. We should the probably. The king of Brazil is back. We should. Steve versus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the king of Rio, Steve said, coming back here in the main event of UFC 301. You know, if this was two, if this was 200 years ago, Steve Ursig would ride into uh, Alexander <laughs> Pantosh's favela on, on horseback, horseback, and he would uh, kill anyone not fit to work. But it's 2024, so he's gonna whoop his ass instead. Man, uh, I, shout, it's the classic Steve Ursig quote. By the way, it's so early on in the week. I can't wait for Steve Ursig to complete his Conor McGregor arc. We'll see him in a nightclub. Breaking a picture of Pantoja and eating it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. You're talking about an all-time trash talker in Steve Ursig. Uh, 
Speaking about that real quick before we continue, do you yeah. remember when Connor did those Q and A's on Twitter? Yes. Yeah. And there, I remember someone asked him what was one of his favorite moments ever, and he said that was one of his favorite moments. Like it was a surreal moment, him in Brazil at a nightclub, breaking that picture of uh, Jose Aldo and eating it. Dude, honestly, like that whole build up is is some of the funniest shit Connor's ever done. Just like everyone ever, like they had like the first press conference, and he got in his face. He's like, he's like, he told him like. Uh, I can't remember the. the I, I should know by now because they chanted at all fucking Brazilian events. But he told him like he will die like in Portuguese, and it's like he's like, dude, this guy is a fucking playing mind tricks, man. But anyways, yeah, I mean, so we got the main event, UFC 301, uh, going down Saturday night, uh, Farmiza Arena and in Rio de Janeiro. By the way, USA put out uh, another travel warning for anybody heading to Brazil because of all the shit that's going on there. So that's kind of funny. So um, be it. Yeah. So. And there's going to be no American fans in attendance. That's Come true. On. That's true. Let's just hope Steve Ursaig stays safe. You know what I mean? Um, although, let's be honest. He put some hands on a couple a couple Brazilians. He's going to do this Saturday night. He might put out a few guys, right? He might put out a few. Uh, yeah, look, dude. Um, it's a good fight. It's a good fight. Um, Steve Ursaig, very much an unknown to a lot of MMA fans, which which kind of sucks because, I mean, the guy's put on a couple bangers so far um, from a contender series guy, I believe. You know, he's had... Ersek did not come to the Contender Series. I swear to God, he competed on the Contender Series. He did not compete on the Contender Series. He came in on short notice of the regional I'm going to blow your mind. Unless he competed on it beforehand and just didn't get signed. Or was scheduled he to... Was, okay, he was scheduled to compete, and then he just got signed. Yeah, bitch. All right, well, you're right. But you know what? Hey, signed the Contender Series at one point in time, Steve Ersek. Um... I mean, at the same time, though, if he would have won on the contender, he still would have made it in. I uh, know. Anyways. Anyway, so we got him coming in here against uh, Pantoja. We know the deal here. The cannibal. One of the most electrifying guys in UFC. 34 years young. Kind of like, you know, he's getting, he's getting close. He's kind of, you know, for a flyaway, he's still sticking and moving, improving. Feels like he's in his prime. Yeah. Won five in a row. Has three wins of a Brandon Moreno, two of a Brandon Roy Val. I mean, we're talking about a guy who's... Not cleared out of division, but he's getting... He's, he's fought pretty much everybody he could in his He's division. basically fought everybody outside of... Uh, Demetrius Johnson. <laughs> no, he's fought everybody outside of like Steve Ursaig and Muhammad Kai, but <laughs> some of the younger dudes. Um, look, Steve Ursaig coming in here, big underdog. Do you think the Astro Boy can get it done on Saturday night in Rio de Janeiro? Well, he, look, he has great hands. We've seen it. He can put guys out. He's tall for the division. He's like around 5'8". Um, if I remember right. Is yeah, that right? 5'8", bang on. Yeah. How about that? That's fucking awesome, dude. But uh, he's five eight. He's good. He has he has a good crowd game from the little I've seen. I've never I've never seen him in at least from the fights I've watched. He not not a lot of crazy scrambles, but when he gets to the positions, he holds them down. He gets it, and he can secure a submission for sure. I am curious to see like in this fight with Pantillo like how the scrambles are going to be because you remember those scrambles in the Moreno fight were pretty out there. They got they were pretty exciting. So. I'm curious to see if, if with Ursaig, as far as the fight does go to the ground, how that's going to be. I think on the feet, he'll be very comfortable, though. Uh, I am curious to see, though, there hasn't been a lot of, like, fire coming back at Ursaig in his fights. He's definitely gotten the benefit of being allowed to be comfortable on his feet, not take a lot of hits, not get a lot coming back. So, especially in a guy with Pantoja who's br- willing to bring the violence, how is that going to be, mm-hmm. you know, when uh, when it's coming his way and he's got to return it, you know, is he going to be comfortable on the back foot hitting from behind? And, uh, you know, is he going to show him, you know, other levels of his game, you know, if there is some high-level wrestling, the jiu-jitsu, those other layers of his game, if he does have it. Which I think he he's going to surprise a lot of people. Um, he is He's an underdog, but, I, like, I am I will not be shocked if we get a, a Steve Ursaig surprise title win like it'd be one of the most shocking moments of the year most unexpected championship change and i think out of all of them yeah and that's partially why this fight is so interesting because it's one of those fights that it's like you know if you think about it you tell, tell somebody it's already steve ursaig you see champion like what the fuck who the fuck is steve ursaig exactly you know I mean? and that's what but makes like, it exciting but then at the same time it's like after the match no win and also just stylistically like he shouldn't be probably getting this opportunity but stylistically he is a very interesting option for Pantoja, and he's going to provide a lot of stylistic challenges. Like you said, tall for the division, long reach, great boxing, uh, knows how to use the hands. It's going to be a fun fight, man. It's going to be a fun fight. I would not be shocked at all if, like, round four comes around, Pantoja's, because let's be honest here, he's a front runner, man. He comes out gas. Well, that's and not even know? just that, Josh. We're going to talk about the age. You know, he's 34. We know that guys slow down at this point in their career. On top of that, his fight style, you know, it's not going to – it's not due for the long run, you know, if he no. keeps fighting the way he does. So eventually, if he keeps fighting that way and he runs into the wrong guy, which this could be this weekend, 
Yeah. And the guy with Steve Versus who has clean hands, I don't know. I don't know if it's power. He just hits the right spot. But that could you know, cut that uh, championship time short. Uh, so, I mean, those those are kind of the factors I'm kind of curious. How is the gas tank going to look? How is Al going to do? How's the pressure of being in Brazil going to be for both these guys, you know, for Pantoja coming back? You know, because it's one thing to fight for your country, you know, on the undercard, building up for it. It's hype. You feel special. But it's another thing to be the front runner with the title, defending mm-hmm. it and having the guy across from the cage wanting to rip your head off. Because it's like, you know, it's a lot of the fighters say, you know, it's like, I wouldn't say it's easy getting the title, but, it, you know, once you get the title, okay, cool. But defending the title That's, is when the yeah. real difficulty starts coming, once guys start defending for you. And it's like, how is he going to deal with that finally when that one, you know, once the guy is actually seeking out him instead of him being the one seeking out the fights? Mm-hmm. Exactly. I saw, uh, it was funny, it's Corey Anderson. I saw talk about this. He's like, yeah, I, I spent my whole, because he won the Bellator title back in February, I think. And he was talking about how, like, you know, I spent all these nights up late studying the champion. I was I was always watching film. I'm always staying ready. I'm always keeping an eye on who the champion is, always watching him. And now everybody's doing that to me. And now I'm the guy with the target. It's like, it's a big difference. On top of that, Ersig but has 14 professional fights. I think five AMI, six AMI, actually. Yeah, yeah. Pantoja has 30 plus, maybe even yeah. approaching 40 a lot more film a and, lot and of a film. lot of fights in the ufc too I mean, uh, yeah i guess the highest level you know available and he's lost in the ufc so that's another thing too you know he's yeah. lost a high level opponent so there's a lot there for steve ursa to work don't be shocked yeah don't, don't be, be shocked. shocked i think pantosha is a comfort pick here for everybody i think for yourself too yes of course i'd yeah. say so um and, and justifiably at the same time we could come in here and ursa could get blown out of the water i don't think it will though I don't think it will, and a lot of people are giving. <laughs> That's hilarious, John. Uh, a lot of MMA media is kind of they they like the fight, they appreciate the fight for what it is, but they're also not really giving Steve Ursa much much of a uh, shot to win. I, I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't say that. I feel like some are like they're saying what we're. I think the common phrase being used is it's interesting. You know? Yeah, he's an interesting guy. He's an interesting choice. Yeah, and look, I mean, ranked number 10, I believe. It's not very rare. It's pretty rare to see a guy like that. Maybe. By the way, is this the biggest uh, jump someone's made to a title shot? Like, I guess... In terms uh, of time? No, like, uh, as far as rankings, like a 10 guy fighting the cup for the title. Dan Henderson was ranked number 13 when he fought Michael Bisping. Nice. Now, granted, you know, and people bitch about this at the time, too, but, like, there was, like, a lot of stuff that went into that. Like, they had the rivalry. Like, Weidman was hurt, and it just lost the belt. Rockhold had just lost the belt. Jacare was hurt. Uh, Yo Romero was on suspension. Like there was like so much shit that went into the to that fight at the time. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. I mean, as far as yeah, dude, Steve Ursig, number ten, ranked number ten. Very rare to see a guy in this sort of position. But look, dude, um, he's got the skills on the feet. Uh, he's still very much an unknown. He's the younger guy. Here's the taller guy, the bigger dude. I mean, he's got a lot of factors going into his uh, advantage. That being said, I think most likely uh, Pantoja going to come out here with the win. I mean, I think he's much better on the mat. I think we haven't seen Steve Gersick have to deal with a lot of fire coming, firepower coming back at him, and he's going to have to deal with that on Saturday. Um, I don't know much about his chin. I mean, there's so many things that are so unknown about Steve Gersick. We know he can get, dish it out, but can he take the fire, Angel? That's I mean, the question. Hey, I'll, I'll give him this. In every fight I've seen him, he's a little composed. He has. He has. He's a very composed guy. Very, Also a very funny guy. Not, have you still watched The Embedded? Uh, no, but he's so... Uh, what's the word? Well-spoken? Uh, not, not the word... He's so, uh, you look at him and it, you, you wouldn't, like unassuming, unassuming, you yeah. wouldn't know, you know, yeah. you look at him and it's just kind of like, this guy's funny. For me. <laughs> you know? This fucking guy is my beat. Yeah, dude, that's, that's the beauty of the sport though. That's the beauty of the sport. Yeah. yeah, dude. Look, man, psych for him. I saw uh, on the embedded, uh, you you might get a kick out of this. He was like, yeah, I got the call. I really wasn't expecting the call. I got the call as I was eating a whole bucket of KFC after, you know, just chilling. <laughs> and I was like. I'm gonna finish the bucket. And then just... by the way, that picture of Pantoja that they got him like behind a hill or, yeah. or a mountain. I mean, I know exactly what you're talking he about. Looks yeah. sick with the belt, dude. You know what? He's a dog, and it feels, it feels like he's finally getting the respect that he deserves. You know what I mean? Oh, he's a fun. He's one of the funnest guys in the division. In the UFC period, for me, man. I, mean, yeah. I love that you're guy. You're right. You're right. Uh, look, man. Um, outside of the main event in the co-main, this card falls off a fucking cliff. Um, but. There are some other fights. I to disagree, talk about. but we'll talk. We'll talk about the whole main card. I guess I should say the whole. I think I, I will say this. I think the main card as a whole is good. It, after the main card, it falls off a cliff. I would still said, disagree. With that's it. fine. You can disagree. Jonathan Martinez. He doesn't Josh Fox beat him. <laughs> All right, fair enough. He. Is, I will demonetize this right now. <laughs> CM Bear agrees. Yeah, we're not monetized. What do you have to say about that, CM Bear? 
Exactly. Fucking nothing. All right. He has nothing to say about <laughs> it. Anyway, so uh, Jonathan Martinez has won seven fights in a row. Most of those being kind of more, I mean, I don't want to say unranked, but guys who are kind of like on the verge of the rankings. Adrian Yanez was ranked. Um, and a couple was of Was Saeed not ranked? I don't believe. I don't believe he was. At the time. I don't think so. But I, I can't, I can't find it. But anyway, so the point being here, he's faced a lot of guys who are either unranked or on the verge of the rankings or top 15s around that area. Well, he's getting the biggest test of his career is he's facing the returning Jose Aldo Jr. You're talking about a guy 37 years old, retired after a loss to Marab Duvalashvili back in August of 2022. Then went off. He fucked off. He did a little bit of boxing. You know, he won two, two out of three. He had a draw with Jeremy Stevens. Um, on the undercard of a, a game bread boxing event, um, an all time great. We know the story here. Fighting in his hometown, it really feels like he's he's getting the send off that he deserved. Fighting in Brazil, the opponent wasn't what they wanted. It's not what we wanted. Everybody, it, he was supposed to fight Dominic Cruz. That fight didn't come together. Said he's facing Jonathan Martinez. Um, very interesting fight. What do you make of this one? It is. Yeah. It just doesn't feel like you said there. It just doesn't feel like the right fight to come back to. And it's also it's also weird because it's been two years now. Yeah. Um. He's removed from the sport. He's also fighting a, a very another unknowing guy. You know, Johnny Martinez is like silently built up his his way up in this division. And I think I even told you this. It's like Johnny Martinez is in the position he is in the rankings, but it feels like they didn't want to give him that big name yet, but they still wanted to take care of him the way, so they gave him Jose Aldo. Mm-hmm. Um, because he he's due for a decent fight, a kind of a name. Where's he? He's twelve right 12, now in the rankings. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Uh, if it's not Dom Cruz, Dom Cruz is ahead of him. Uh, Bob Fun just fought, not available. Umar, we know um, they're trying to get Umar a big fight. Kyler Phillips just fought recently. But if it's not those guys, you have Song Yidong, Cejudo, Cheeto. You know, it's other. It's guys with relevance in the division. Guys who have built up their name very well, and he's being, I, I hate to say, it, prevented from that opportunity. You know. Uh, I mean, if he gets this one, I mean, he will be undeniable for a, for a fight because he's what on four fight four fight fight win streak. Uh, he's won seven in a row. Oh, sh- in the UFC? Yes. Oh, yes, well, sir. dude, that'll be number eight. Yeah, he'll be undisputed for for a big fight. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. I mean, it, just cra- uh, excuse me, six fight win streak, I believe. So I was a little bit off, but six. Um, shit it's about to be seven probably yeah and, and guys in there like Cubs I mean full disclosure dude I mean I think this is the worst possible matchup for Jose Aldo to come back to I mean I don't, I don't know he's, he's a he's a he's a low ranked guy who is on a fucking tear yes and it's like he's not a big name either it's like yeah man, man Jose, I mean I mean, I think we even talked about it a while back when we talked about that Jose was coming back that Johnny Martinez got the call and they're like yeah you're fighting Jose Aldo and he thought it was a new guy yeah, not, like not no the way. Jose Aldo. It's like there's no way there's no way they're giving me Jose Aldo, right? Dude, yeah. th- by the way, I looked it up like before we started filming. Dude, Jonathan Martinez is an unknown guy to a lot of people because he's had he's not fought in front of a crowd since twenty twenty. February of twenty twenty. Yeah. Every single fight. February second, twenty twenty. Yeah. Exactly. Every single fucking fight for this poor guy has been at the UC Apex. Poor dude. Yeah, I mean look, um But this is his chance. Yeah. To to get a big win over a guy because it, it'll it'll make headlines it'll make news if he gets a finish over Jose Aldo it'll especially be blown up and he's he's definitely capable of that Josh I mean the guy has great kicks great leg kicks great kicks some of the yeah. uh, probably the best kicks in the division right now oh yeah I'd say if, if not the best a lot of people probably don't know that because they haven't probably cared to watch him but I've I've been there man watching that journey and I know this kid has I thought it was gonna be Chris Gutierrez out of that gym because they both are yeah in the same gym they train together and. uh you know, Chris Gutierrez has had you know some stumbles along the way, but Jonathan Martinez has been able to get some of those wins, like the Saeed win, Cubs the Adrian Swanson. Cub Swanson, Cub Cubs Swanson, the Giannis win, and, and been able to break through a little bit. If he breaks through with Jose Aldo, man, like like I just said not too long ago, he's undeniable. Another thing I think which is going to be good, Jose Aldo has good leg kick defense, has developed good leg kick defense over the years, but at the same time, it's been two years, has been out of action in the ring, has been in the octagon for a minute now, and man, I just. I know if Jonathan Martinez gets it going. It's not going to be a fun night in the office, potentially, for Jose Aldo. But the mind is still there. The body will be – some of the body is still there, you know. But at the same time, it's like I just don't know if there's enough there for Jose Aldo to get it done. And we could be completely wrong. Jose Aldo might come in here and give us a fucking master class. He might. He's just that guy. He's proved us wrong so many times. And he I mean? might just do it again. I just – 
There's just a lot of things that are not pointing in that direction. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna pick Jonathan Martinez. I don't want. You to. Know, I really thought you were gonna go for it. You know, I thought you're gonna be like, you know, I'm picking Jose all day. <laughs> It'd be really funny if I did. But look, um, I think he's a I great underdog pick. Yeah, I mean, he's he's just such an unknown at this point. I mean, he left at the top of the division. Like, and I remember people were like he could he could have gotten a title shot, and they arguably should have given him one before he fought Marab, mm-hmm. you know, and they didn't. And they're like, you don't fight Marab in fucking Salt Lake City. That you know, elevation, that elevation is like no wonder he retired. I'd be like, fuck this shit. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, man, and that fight was terrible, and he didn't really get anything off in that one. So we can, so we haven't really gotten a really a good look at Jose Aldo in years. He's coming in here on a six-week camp. You know, they signed this fight like March twentieth or some shit. So it's like he he's he doesn't have a whole lot a whole lot of time to prepare. Facing a guy on a six fight winning streak who is a decade younger than him. It's not it's I love Jose Aldo, an all time great. It's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. So, um, and that's why they should never book this fight. Cause it's not like they don't have other veterans they can give him. By the way, is this just a three rounder? It's just three rounds, yeah. I'm just curious. I don't know why they didn't run fucking Cejudo against. I mean, I guess you know he just fought. What is it? Three months ago? Fuck it. They could have done that. But too. I mean, he could have thrown money at them to do that. Exactly. It's like, yeah, man, we we didn't have Dominic Cruz, so let's. Dude, let's they just paid Cejudo 150k to lose. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or 100, 125 or whatever. You're telling me they couldn't have been like, we'll give you 250 to fight Jose Aldo. Exactly. And show. In Brazil, and that fight was booked at one point too, so there's history yeah. there. Yeah. So it's just like I don't know. I don't get why they booked this fight. Um, I, mean, I get I get why they did, but I still don't like it. Like, I, yeah. John the Martinez is probably going to win here. I would not be surprised if Jose Aldo won, but it's just like on paper. It will. It, it, but dude, you know how good of a feel good moment it will be if he does. It would be sick. It would be sick, dude. If he gets if he gets a win, especially by finish in Brazil, he can go out on top because realistically, I think it's a one off. He's already talked about it. if he wins this one, he wants to go back to boxing. He wants to be on the Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson, uh, almost like Roy Jones, Jake Paul undercard. So he's got other plans. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, it is what it is. I'm assuming you're kind of in line with me on that one. Yeah, I'm in some way. Okay. Um, next up, Anthony Lionheart Smith. Man, you're talking about a guy who's had a rough fucking year. I mean, the last 12 months for this guy have not been excellent. Um, I mean, even longer than that, man. It's been it's been a rough two years or so at this point. <clears throat> Last time out, he lost to Khalil Roundtree. Stepped up on short notice, by the way, to fight Khalil Roundtree. Um, got knocked out in the third. Prior to that, he beat Ryan Spann. Split decision. Prior to that, lost to Johnny Walker by decision. You're, you're beating attacking my, my family. family. You're beating. You're attacking my family. What? <laughs> <laughs> Just. <laughs> and then he uh, lost to Magomed Ankalaev by injury. Um, Look, ranked number ten. I mean, there's still there's still some things to like here about Anthony Smith. Good striker. We know the deal. Still thinks that he can get a title shot, uh, and he's realistically right because um, you know Alex Bahay is not really, you know, <laughs> he'll fight anybody. I guess is my point. Unfortunately for him, he's set to fight an eleven and zero fucking monster out of Brazil. A great prospect, v- Vitor Petrino, twenty six years young, four wins inside the octagon. He got signed after a contender series win in 2022. He beat the pleasure man. Okay. He submitted marching practice. He knocked out Medeiros Bugagas and then he dominated Tyson Pedro. A great four fight run for him. But I'm sure you noticed none of those guys are ranked. None of those guys were kind of. And some of those guys are out of the UFC now. Some of those guys, multiple guys out of the UFC. This will actually, and you might as well just say it. I mean, we got to put it out there. This is the best opponent Victor Petrino has fought by a long shot. By a long shot. Not even close. So the question is, is can his youth carry him? Will he ride his momentum into it? Or will Anthony Smith kind of go out there and have a veteran performance? I think it could turn into that. It could be a very hard fought victory for Anthony Smith because Victor Petrino, I've said this, young in his MMA career. I think, he, what did I say? He turned professional in 2019, 2018. Yeah. Not that long ago. And in some of his fights, he's been called out by the commentary being like, you know, you can tell there is still stuff that needs to be worked on for him to, you know, stuff, stuff that needs to be worked on to just get to that next level and become a complete fighter. Yeah. Uh, but he has a lot of great physical attributes. Like you said, he has youth on his side. He could show up in here and, and, and honestly mix up, uh, you know, stir up the division because mm-hmm. he really would. He, he, he was a unranked, unknown fighter with nine fights, you know, what is it, a year or two ago, year and a half ago. To now, well, however many fights he has now, eleven, you know. eleven fights, and um, in in a what would it be like top ten guy in the division? Yep, literally ranked number ten. But but at the same time, I I don't think that necessarily is a good thing for him, either going forward, 
Uh, I think he still needs to build up a lot and get to that point because realistically, if you throw him in there against the top three, top four, top five, I think he gets fucked up and it's not even close. Um, not nothing against him. I just think he's just not ready yet, which is per- I think I feel like a lot of times fighters need to like need to accept the fact like it's not time yet. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of guys don't know that, and I think for him, that is a fact. Granted, he might come in here and blow Anthony Smith out of the water, but what can I take out of that when I just saw Anthony Smith get annihilated really... by two, two, three dudes? You know? Yeah, so. you know, you know the Khalil Roundtree knockout, which was scary. Yeah, the hard fought Ryan Spann victory, right, which is questionable. Yeah, yeah. the Johnny Walker one, where he, he just he, got dominated, he just got dominated, and just then coming Uncle off I- an injury. Yeah, and then on Goliath, I mean, he he lost that one technically due to an injury, but he was losing that fight badly before the injury too. So it's like, yeah. You know, it, um, it, it's been the downtrend for Anthony Smith, but he could get one back here against a young talent and could, you know, revive him a little bit. Exactly. Um, I'm picking Vito Retreat. <laughs> I want to pick him. I just think, uh, look, man, Anthony Smith, there's been times in the past where kind of prematurely called like, oh, yeah, he's washed. You know what I mean? Because he's, he's so deep in his career. Now he's 36. It's like he's had moments in the past where it's like, OK, this is the start of the downfall. And then he'll bring it back, get a two fight win streak, three fight win streak. Bring it back. I think he's actually washed now, and I think that Ryan Span fight was the one that told me um, because it's like it's one thing for you to lose via injury. It's one thing for you to get dominated by a guy like Johnny Walker. He's very up and down, but to fight a guy who had just fought like two years previous and dominated in the first round for you to then arguably lose to that guy, and it's not like Ryan Span made a big leap. We just saw him get murdered by Bogdan over the weekend. Who was a complete unknown. A few exactly. Back. So it's like. And then after that, he went on to proceed to get just dominated by Khalil Roundtree. So it's like, man. Hey, Khalil Roundtree's about to fight Jamal Hill. <laughs> and he has a good chance of winning that one, honestly. He so uh, and that's no disrespect to Anthony Smith. It's just, I think, when you look at the miles he's had, like, fewer men, like, so few men would have made it to the point that he's I think he's at almost now. at 60 fights, too. Exactly. So many guys would have quit before now. So many guys would have never got that title shot in 2019. You know what I mean? Guys would have never been able to have the career resurgence he's been able to have. So when I'm saying these things, it's not a disrespect to the guy, but he's 56 fights deep. He's lost three of his last four. He is 35 years old, going to be 36 in two months. And he's facing a guy who is undefeated in his home country and a decade younger than him. So uh, the numbers don't lie, folks. And it spells disaster for Anthony Smith, UFC 3 I will say, if there was a fight you want to avoid, if you were going to put money on it, it would be this one, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think by a mile. Oh, yeah. I don't have the odds because Best Fight Odds is doing maintenance right now. Uh, but <laughs> You can look at them on Tapology. Oh, no, oh, we're, back. we're back. We're back. We're <laughs> back. We're back, bitches. But they I might mean, not have it, though. No, I bet they're going to have it. Oh, there they are. Dude, oh, my God. Vito Portino is a minus 500, according to Bet. Dude, I might have to throw some gunny down on Anthony Smith That's, and Jose Aldo and Steve Ursig. Those are crazy odds, by the way. If I had, more, you know, if I, if I had the ability to put money down... This weekend, which I sadly don't, I would yeah do like a crazy yeah. little parlay just for the fun. Yeah, dude, I can't believe I'm that. Throw, actually, I might still, you know, I might throw down a fiver and put and do Steve Ursay, Jose Aldo, Anthony Smith all to win. How is Steve Ursay a smaller underdog than Anthony Smith for Saturday? I mean, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but that just seems it's crazy. Just to people me. don't watch the flyweight division, Josh. That's true. They don't know how good Pantoja is. Anyways, besides the point, uh, are you going to go with Anthony Smith for the upset or no? I'm going to go, you know, honestly, you really discouraged me out of it after hearing you talk. So I'm going to go Victor Petrino. I made a really good case, didn't I? Yeah. I mean, and look, I, I already thought of it, but the thing is, like, I am treading on water on this one because, like, we've seen him come back. And granted, this is the worst it's ever been. Oh, yeah. It's been, it's been rough. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, coming off the, I mean, I'm not going to lie, though, Josh. Glover and Rockage, those two were bad. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, that was Glover and Rockage. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. so that's that's the other thing. But you know what, man? Uh, gonna take Petrino then for both of us. Uh, next up, man, this is a short notice fight. Michelle Pahea, who since moving down to mid, I'm uh, moving down, Jesus, moving up. moving up to middleweight, has just looked phenomenal. He, and he was riding Winchy before that. Knocked out Andre Petrovsky in his debut. Beat Michelle Leolchuk inside of him. Both his two fights in middleweight have taken a combined two minutes. So very dominant. Taking on Ilhor Pateria. Man, you know what? This is this is a he's setting him up for a great story here, man. You know, Ilhor Pateria, who we know, the duelist, uh, as he is known, out of Ukraine, 
This guy, two and three in the UFC f- so far, got knocked out in his debut and then faced an ancient Shogun Hua in Brazil, knocked him out. You know, he had two laws in a row, and then he, he picked up a decision this, win. This is a weight change, though, right? Was his last fight at 185 as well? Uh, his last he's, – he's fought at two. His last fight was 185, and he missed weight by two and a half pounds. So can he make it this time and also win again? Because before that, he was fighting at 205, and it was not working out. Correct. Look, man, this is they're setting him up for a great story here. If he can knock him out in Brazil a year after he murdered poor old Shogun, Michelle Pajaya will be my hero of the night in my <laughs> DTF fighter of the week. Uh, and I think he will. I you think know what's crazy? Out there How did they up. not give Michelle Pajaya a ranked fighter? Because he was ranked in welterweight. Dude, I, I, mean, if, I mean, if he wins this, he deserves it. Like, there's no question about yeah. it. They need to get him a ranked fight. I don't care who it is. There's, well, even then, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to fight Mahmoud Muradov, who's also not ranked before this. We talked about this, dude. Like, I think that um, they, like, punished him for some reason after he moved down like moved up from welterweight because he missed weight multiple times i think that's it it's the only thing i could think of because they gave they've given him as a ranked guy who knocked out santiago ponzinibbio before moving up last fight with a ranked guy knocked him out i think he beat multiple guys who were ranked at 170 i believe you're correct he beat more than one at least more than one could you go down ponzinibbio andre fiala when fiala was on a fucking tear Uh nico price Chaos Williams. So really, it was only Fialo and Pons maybe who were good wins. Okay, never mind. So, but I thought, but he did get a win over a formerly ranked opponent. Or I think he was in the rankings, and those guys were fighting him when he was holding down the spot. I believe something like that. But yeah, dude. So he, so he, you know, just a couple of great wins, man. And then he's he's fought two guys who were not even close to the. I mean, I guess Petrovsky was kind of close, you know, one point in time, but not really. So it's an issue. Because he's had his troubles recently. Yeah, I think I think Bahay's gonna go out there and fuck him up. I think Ilho Bateria, um, it's just not. Uh, it's a terrible matchup for him, dude. Honestly, short notice, missed weight last time out. You know, I mean, I've never really thought <laughs> fighting in Brazil was, again. Yeah, I mean, I in, in full disclosure, I think this guy was super easy. I don't think he's very great anyway. But combine the weight misses, combine the short notice factor, combine the fact that he's fighting in Brazil. It's just so many factors going against him. And I think Bahia is going to go out there and I think he's going to put a stamp on it, get another first round finish. But hey, we'll see. We'll see. I'm in agreement. Yeah, you're in agreement? You're not, you're not picking the duelist yeah. for when he knocked out. You don't like when he knocked out Shogun and he did the fucking Fortnite dance, you know? Like, <laughs> fucking can't. I was about to say like a fucking slur. I can't say that. But anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, anyway. You didn't have to say all that, Josh. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Sean Strickland? No, I'm not. I'm not fucking. You know, Sean Strick, the former neo Nazi, not looking a lot of former recently. If you've seen his fucking post on Twitter, um. Anyways, opening up the card, low key banger. Paul Craig, the Bear Jew, two grapplers. So you know what that means, Josh? It's turning to striking battle. Yeah, it's gonna be Damian Maya Ben Askren part two, man. Oh God, uh, I hope not. Paul Craig. I mean, moved down to middleweight last July. Got a nice winner, Andre Muni- Muniz. Then lost to Brendan Allen. Got really dominated in that one in last November. Taking on Caio Baraglio. 31 years old. The natural. Straight up stole that shit from Mandy. He said, I'm taking it. It's mine. <laughs> uh, he's on a hell of a win streak. Came in off of multiple contender series wins. Um, beat, few, uh, I guess, the future Bellator title challenger, Aaron Jeffrey. Um, went to, to get the... To get the I guess he didn't even get signed after that one. Then he got another winner contender series. Since then, he's riding a four five winning streak inside the octagon. Beat Abu Smagomedov. Don't know why he hasn't gotten a title shot. It's kind of, it's kind of not fucking hurt. Um, I wish brought Sean Strickland, dude. Where is Kyle Baralo's title shot? You know what I'm saying? If you if beating Abu is what it takes, I mean. Anyways, both these guys have a couple. Uh, you know, they've had some up and down moments. You know, Baralo also fought at light heavyweight in the past. Uh, it's an interesting fight, man. Um, I'm going to go and take Kyle Barala. What do, what do you think? I think, um, you know, we're in agreement. So he's like the one, the 185 prospect or one, one of the many, I guess at this point now. Yeah. There's a lot of dogs in 185 right now, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, man. The natural riding a hell of a win streak. Paul Craig has just struggled so badly. Um, although he did, he did see you've got blonde hair now. Who? Paul Craig. Oh God. I'm dead ass. Yeah. He's, he's doing with a little bit of hair he has. Yeah, he's he's pulling. He basically, I think he's hoping that if he dyes his hair blonde and he fights in Brazil, he does, get, he's doing like the Charles Oliveira. Thing. Yeah, he'll get like a he got like a plus five like boost to his stats. You know, <laughs> plus five. You mean just plus one, bro? I don't think he's gonna add that much. Nah, dude, you don't get it. You don't get it because you're not part of the Oliveira army. Not fighting. <laughs> you don't get it, dude. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Kyle Barallo. I think it's just, I think he's the better guy. I think it's that simple. I mean, even if you're excluding the age and the struggles, I think you'd win this fight anyway. Um, 
overall, though, good main card. I, I will say that. I mean, th- this uh, you talked about um, before we start filming Morning Combat said that this card is kind of like a very good card that Demetrius Johnson would have headlined on Fox a couple of years ago. Perfect way to put it. That's exactly what this is. Except they're charging seventy five dollars for it. So I mean, that's the problem. But. Well, I mean, shit. The ESPN is charging like a hundred bucks a year now to fucking even. Hey, man, you know what? They need their money, though. Don't you get it? It's inflation or something. Uh, anyways. Can you uh, scroll up a little bit just so I can see the card? Yeah, yeah. And we have on the prelims, we have a couple of interesting fights. Um, on the on the main prelims, Jack Shore, Joe Anderson, Brito should be fun. That's a banger. Carolina Kukovic, dude, so many people wrote her off, man. She lost five in a row. I, I thought think. she should have been cut. You. So did I. So did I. I said she's either got to get cut or she's got to retire. Nah, dude, fuck that. She said, I'm coming back. I'm she won back. four fights in a row. Not the greatest of competition, but I mean, Fleece Herring, another vet, Silva- uh, Silvana Gomez Juarez, who had got a couple knockout wins. Vanessa Villamopoulos, that was a very good win. Um, and then Deanna Belbita, you know, solid win as well. So she's coming back here. This She's outgunned in this one, though, against uh, Eisman Lucindo, um, a good prospect down at 115. Um, Elvis Brenner coming back here. Dude, against Mertbeck. You know? Orobai. He had a sick uh, UFC debut, so that should be a banger. Yeah, hell of a name, too. When Liam Gomez, that should be a banger as well. D- uh, by the way, one of the most slept guys, like, slept on guys that went to fight, Drogar Close. Oh, yeah. He was removed a little bit while, for a little while in the sport, came back, and I think he got a win in his return. I could be wrong. Yeah, so not only did he get a win, he uh, straight up, I mean, he's murdered some dudes since coming back here. I mean, he, he got pushed by Jeremy Stevens after cutting weight, and I believe that like really fucked him up. Like, he not only got a concussion, but he got, like, some disc in his neck was, like, fucked up. So, we had to take off straight up two years of MMA. Since then, knockout winner of Brandon Jenkins and just annihilated and beat Hoffa Garcia. Another good win. And then knocked out Joe Selecki. Like you said, dude, great shout. Super underrated guy, 155. Um, taking on Joaquin Sylvia, who we know the story there. Nearly handed, nearly handed Armand Zeruki in a loss, man. I mean, very up and down guy. Great striker, though. You know, should be fun. Um... Marci- uh, Mauricio Ruffy taking on Jamie Malarkey, Australia's finest, traveling to Brazil. You another, know? Another, another fellow Australian, another fellow Aussie on the undercard. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Yeah, it could be fun. By the way, the disrespect for this man, Ismail Bonfim relegated yeah. to the early pregame, early prelims against Vince Pichel. Yeah, and by the way, I mean, that's a banger, dude. And Vince Pichel, it's not like he's ass, dude. He's he's. The only issue is Vince, Vince, Vince Pichel is 41. 41 has not fought in two years since a loss to Mark Madsen. Does not seem 41, dude. I mean, this guy, crazy. What crazy was the Bonfim's last fight? This Bonfim brother's last fight? Yeah, let me it was his know. loss, right? I believe so. To, oh, man, what was his Ismael. name? Ismael. Did he lose to St. Denis? I could be wrong. Yeah, he lost to Benoit St. Denis last July, which, by the way, no shame in that. shows you the fucking run that guy was on, dude. Oh, my God. That guy was fighting... <laughs> Ismail, last, last, what is that, July? Dude, hell of a run for Benoit. Uh, but yeah, dude, Ismail Bonfim coming back here. Um, yeah, man, excited to see it. Excited to see it. Should be a banger. Uh, Vince Michelle, man, he's he's old. I don't agree with his politics. He's also coming off of t- like two years away. This is a weird I matchup, think, but it looks, I mean, they're, they're trying to throw my man a bone. You know? I, I do, but I also think Vince Michelle might surprise some people here. I think he might think about having some moments. He's a good brawler. He, he's a lot of fun. You know, I already get out of there too. Oh yeah, hell of a guy. Uh, and then Alessandro Costa, Kevin Boyas, uh, opening up the uh, early prelims on on Saturday. Um, it's a fun card. It's not worth your money, I'd say. So if you're rating it on a scale of like a fight night card, it's like an eight or nine out of ten. Oh yeah. If you're definitely. rating it on pay per view scale, it's a three out of ten. Maybe not that low. Four, uh, out of ten. Uh, uh, four, 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 almost. A, yeah, no, maybe a five. I, I think, yeah, four, oh, we'll go, we'll go a four point seven. You know, I like that, Josh. Yeah, so. CM Bear, I think he agrees. CM Bear, CM Bear actually is is uh, half Brazilian, so he's gonna give <laughs> the fucking eight out of ten. No, I mean, uh, yeah, man, it's a car that's happening. If you guys are gonna watch, uh, if you guys aren't watching Canelo, you might as well watch fucking UC three hundred one, I guess. Which, speaking of, we got to go ahead and move on to the news, uh, and I guess we might as well hop into that one first. Canelo Alvarez, and we talked about this a little bit last week, so I don't think we'll get into a whole preview. Canelo Alvarez, this Saturday night, facing Jaime Munguia uh, on pay-per-view. I believe Amazon Prime pay-per-view. Don't quote me on that one, though. Really? Um, That's his own? Uh, I don't know for sure. But I don't think it really matters. I mean, I'm not going to 
I'm actually going to my local Buffalo Wild Wings for this one. Oh, really? Um, Are you going to do the same thing for uh, UFC 301? I'm not, dude. Yeah, I'm going to spend all night there. All night. You know what would be Buffalo funny? If, if you were just like, fucking, I'm streaming it. <laughs> just double, just, just was straight up about it. Yeah, I'm going to uh, Stream East for this one. Uh, <laughs> Damn, why, why you got to dox him like that? No, nah, I'm fucking around. But I see people do that all the time. It's like, I don't, I don't feel bad about doing it. You know, I don't really use Streamies. You know, I use actual good sites. Um, but I don't, when I don't go to my local Buffalo Wild Wings. I mean, that's what I, that's what I mean. I'm actually going to my local Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, so yeah, man. I mean, Canelo, I don't know what there is to say about this fight. We kind of, we kind of spoke about this official, like, uh, like not the official preview. We talked about it last week. This is the official preview, just official prediction. Canelo, probably by decision, if I had to guess. I think Hamid Mungi is gonna you, stay in there. You don't think he finishes Hamid Mungi? I think Ham, I think Hamid Mungi is gonna stay in there. I think he's gonna take a lot of punishment, but I think he's gonna stay in there. I think he'll have some big moments, especially early. I think he might, you know, he'll, he'll tag. I was, him. Saying, I was watching some other people talk about it, and they're giving like Mungi like a really good chance. I'm like, uh, have you guys seen Hamid Mungi fight? Yeah, and and also it's also the fact that he's had a lot of uh, not turmoil, but like. He left Eric Morales in like January. Okay, well, Eric Morales is going into politics in Tijuana. There's a lot. No, know. I know, I get, it. I get it, but still, like a chain. It, oh, to be fair, he did look damn good against with Freddie Roach against uh, John Ryder. Hey, dude, I'll tell you what, Freddie so, Roach might have fucking Parkinson's, but that man is still holding bad. Dude, and you know what? He's even like, yeah, like it helps me. Like it really, and, and that's funny because I've heard about that from like other people. Like because you got him moving. They talk exactly. about people who have Parkinson's should be very active. Yeah, I can't remember who it was, but there's like a uh, for like WCW did like a show in North Korea in the nineties. Like North Korea, which they like, I don't know why, but they like wanted celebrities and they wanted to do like a big wrestling show. And Muhammad Ali was there, and I guess like he like, I don't remember who, might have been Ric Flair or somebody like told the story, or maybe Antonio Inoki of like Muhammad Ali, like who was in Parkinson's. This is like nineteen ninety, I like nine or something, right? And like he's got Parkinson's, but he he sees like some stairs and he runs up the stairs and starts shadow boxing, and it's like it's back in like the sixties, like he just has that muscle memory. It's like dude, that's that's fucking crazy. For Freddie Roach, probably the same thing. You know what I mean? Um. But yeah, dude. I mean, yeah, I think the sad thing too is it gets worse though because you you see him and it's only gotten worse. Exactly, it does suck. It's terrible. It's it's. If there's one thing I don't want to get, it's Parkinson's. But I'm not gonna live long enough to get Parkinson's. I'm not that worried. Yeah, about, I'm, not that, I'm not that worried about that. You know, I I treat my body like a temple, and that temple wants Taco Bell. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, are you gonna Taco Bell today? I I mean, I haven't ruled it out. I mean, <laughs> I never I didn't put much thought into it. But I mean, you know what I mean? Did you uh, drop? By the way, what is like? Dead serious, no meme. Yeah. You go to Taco Bell right now, what would be your order? If I'm going to talk about this exact... Now, I will say they've gotten rid of the shit over the years I normally eat. I'm a big quesarito guy. I'm a big Mexican pizza guy. It's a web app thing now. It's Yeah, but they took it off there too. I know. Don't even get me started. Okay. So, I'm going I'm to pull up there. I'm going to get a couple of spicy potato soft tacos. They're only a dollar. Very underrated. I'm going to get some Diablo sauce. They're good. I'm going to get... I'm probably gonna get a quesadilla if I if I if I'm if I'm just throwing money out if I'm just throwing my hard earned money that I make at my job I'm just throwing it out throwing it out of my ass dude I'm gonna get like a quesadilla I'm gonna get a steak quesadilla you know uh, I'll probably get like some nachos too you know what I mean maybe maybe get maybe I'll get one of those Dorito tacos you know what I mean I'm, I'm you know what I mean I like to diversify it really. I don't have like a, a set in. Order. No, no, not, that's, not that's, that's usually how it is. You're, and then I and then I go home and I shit my. <laughs> You're not wrong. For six hours, I just sit there. No, um, yeah, I'm fucking around. Um, I'm a, Let me guess. Let me guess. You're a fucking. You're a, you're a, what is it fucking called? Um, you say crunch wrap every now and then. Yeah, you're a crunch wrap. I do enjoy a crunch wrap every now and then, but usually as of lately, my order has been like Mexican pizza with the two tacos. Yeah. And I'll do a, I get a chicken quesadilla. That's usually it right there. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. I like that. Yeah. Anyways, we should probably move on from Taco Bell talk because we're talking about. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I mean, Canelo is going to knock the shit out of Hamu Mungi. I'm not really going <laughs> to. Damn, I mean, Josh. Yeah, I mean, look. Call I like, it right now. Call it, call it around. Uh, 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 round uh, uh, 11, stoppage. Late, at two, late. Two, round 11, stoppage 215. Freddie Roach gets on the thing. He throws in the towel. Oh, you think they're throwing the towel? <laughs> I Jokes aside, I already let you know my official prediction. I think it's probably going to be a decision. But for shits and gigs, I'm going to go 11th round stoppage. Like Ryan Garcia, round six knockout. <laughs> I hate you. Anyways, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm assuming you're in line with me. I know that you talked about it. I, I think Mungia is going to get beat up on this. I could be completely wrong, but, I mean, look, I'll, I'll be perfectly fine coming back on the show and eating crow and saying I was completely incorrect. Yeah. Or we might come in here and be like, Jaime Mungia is the face of boxing. <laughs> Uh, we and by the way, we have not seen Oscar De La Hoya since Saturday night. There, <laughs> rumors are he's still in Las Vegas. 
hold up at the MGM Grand. What, you know? By the way, what would be more? Actually, I don't even, this is a stupid question. What would be more crazy result? Steve versus saying, what are you, the title? Or Jaime Munguia defeating Canelo? Jaime Munguia defeating Canelo. No <laughs> that, doubt. That's crazy. We, you know, I, I don't even know why I ask because we actually give Ursic like a good chance. We yeah. really don't give Munguia much of a chance. I don't give Munguia okay, much of a chance. scratch that. Yeah. What would be more crazy? Anthony Smith beating Vitor Petrino or Jaime still, Munguia? Still probably Jaime Munguia. Okay. Still probably. But that one's more competitive. I like that one. I like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, look, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, yeah. I mean, I like comment. I like him. I like the guy. Jaime Munguia. Jaime Munguia. I like him. He's outmatched, though. He's outmatched. I think so, too. So, yeah, we're in agreement there. Um, I don't think we have a whole lot of time to really spend. I don't think we have to spend a lot of time. No, no, no. no, no. But you know what we are going to spend a little bit of time on? Man, they fucking did it. They actually fucking did it. I didn't want to see him do it, but I knew they were going to do it. And I told you when they announced this fight, this Texas would sanction a fucking duel (laughs) if it could make money. And you know what's going to happen? Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson already came out and said it was an exhibition. I'm assuming they threw even more money at him for him to step up and fight Jake Paul in a professional boxing match sanctioned. How by much money do you think they're giving Iron Michael? They're giving him at least $20 million. Damn. They, you think they, they have got that? to be. How much money is Jake they making ha- then? Probably less. Like, ten, like $5 million? Probably 10 Five. I mean, he's got Netflix backing it, and they have like infinite money. They're throwing tons of money at sports right now. Because they just got the WWE for like billions of dollars. So it's like they're throwing so much money. I'm sure these guys are making so much money. But it's officially a professional boxing match. Now, that comes with a little bit of a caveat. It could be a professional boxing match in the same way that women's boxing matches are professional. <laughs> Whoa, Josh. That sounds that actually sounds like I'm taking a little bit of a shot. I'm not trying to. I think women, women's bo- – I respect women, Angel. The fucking <laughs> respect women. I, 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 I respect women, okay? I am, I am you know, not sexist. That's not my point. But, you know, it's going to be eight two-minute rounds, and they're also going to have 14-ounce gloves instead of, what is it, 12-ounce gloves, I believe? So big, slightly bigger gloves and then shorter rounds. It's also only going to be eight rounds, not ten. So um, You're telling me they don't want to do eight ounces in there, dude? Yeah, they should. They should do eight-ounce eight gloves, dude. Somebody's getting knocked out. Six ounces. <laughs> what, what, what was nope. it? Eddie no padding. Yeah. Yeah, dude, dude, fuck it. Bare knuckle? Bare knuckle. Bare knuckle? No, I mean, look, um, this is a uh, this is a crime. I, I I think if if something happens to Mike Tyson, everybody that sanctioned this and approved of this should fucking they should go to prison. I don't think anything's gonna happen to him. I think realistically, we talked about this a little bit before we started filming. I think realistically, Mike probably has two to three rounds of gas, and it'll probably be a fun fight for the first two or three rounds. Um, but look, dude, I mean, Jake Paul is. 30 years younger like we looked this up the biggest gap in a boxing match in boxing history is 24 years this fight has 30 six more years now granted that doesn't mean mike can't win i mean he's a former all-time great and it's not like he's your average 57 year old man he's fucking mike tyson and he's also kept himself in shape. I wish if Mike could do like all the TRT, all the steroids in the world, you give him dude, a chance. Dude, come on, dude. Do you think he's not on all the fucking shit? I mean, I'm shit? sure he could do a lot, but I'm saying if he could like peek it out, do whatever, like max it out. Oh, yeah. I mean, if look, if they're giving him fucking rocket fuel, I'm sure he can beat Jake <laughs> Paul. But I mean, I, it's not, it's just a matter of if he's getting it or not. I mean, and Jake, it's not, let's not act like Jake Paul is not, dude. I mean, Jake is the nattiest fighter. In dude, he's on the shit that makes your head grow. That's what yeah. he's on. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I mean, and I saw I saw somebody I don't remember who it was that was talking about this like yeah Jake's already up to two somebody like in his camp is like yeah he's already up to two twenty and I'm like dude what the fuck are they giving him <laughs> like <laughs> and by the way I don't really care I mean I've been upfront on the show I don't really care about doping but I'm also not gonna pretend that these guys are natty you know what <laughs> I mean like I'm not gonna hey, you guys if you guys want to live in fucking Candyland or the fuck where Mike Tyson and Jake Paul aren't on steroids then that's fine maybe not Mike maybe Mike's just on TRT or something but. I mean, we know Jake's on some shit, which is, you know, fine, whatever. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, what do you what do you think about this fight being a professional boxing match and not an exhibition? I was kind of shocked that they were even able to make it a pro match. I thought it was as stick as an exhibition, and that was it. The fact that they managed to make a pro is wild. The fact that there's a possibility that on Mike Tyson's record, you might see L followed by Jake Paul, which Josh is just in pain over there thinking about the possibility of that even happening look when 2016 happened something got fucked up in the timeline <laughs> all right? i'm not sure if this is if this is even real you know like god damn it 
Like, and it's going to happen. I'm not going to, I'm, I don't, I, I mean, I'm, I look, I don't want to give my official prediction because we still have months before the fight, July 20th, AT&T stadium. That's when the fight's happening. Um, but look, dude, I mean, dude, he's so old. I mean, it's one thing for like a guy to be like 50 fighting. If this was Mike of 2020, I'd actually might pick him to win. Like if this was like just Mike of 2020, it's Jacob now. You know what I mean? But dude, the age catches up to you fast, you know, like, and you don't even think about it. And everybody's different. And I understand that. And Mike's going to be on TRT and I'm very well aware of that. And I know he's training his ass off. He's a great team, a great coach with him. Um, Rafael, Rafael Cordero of MMA Masters, I believe. Um, Dominic. Yeah. Training him uh, again for this one. Look, uh, I don't think Mike's going to get too badly fucked up. And who knows, he might even win because I still don't know how good of a Dude, boxer. it's eight rounds, dude. This bitch about to be a draw. It's probably going to be a draw. Uh, but that being said, I am more than willing to, you know, if you're a, a Texas judge, if you work for the athletic commission, hit me up. I'll toss you some money. I mean, I'll just make sure that Mike gets every swing round, you know? Um, you know. <laughs> There even is a swing round. Oh God, I hope, dude. I just, I just can't. Like, I, I said this on, I said this when this on Twitter when this first guy first fight uh, got announced. I was like, man, I'm going to light myself on fire. Like, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't deal with. Look, it's one thing for him to beat old ass Anderson Silva, but I'm like in my head, I'm like, you know, he's old and Anderson Silva's not even a boxer or Nate Diaz because it's like Nate Diaz fights at 155. This fight is taking place at 195. You know what I mean? Nate fights at 170, like Josh. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, right? The one time he did, or, but like, yeah, like. I guess he can do it more than once. We get my point. It's like, but Mike Tyson is just like, he's like a part of American history. You know what I mean? Like, it's You're like, he's a living He's part legend. of world history. Fuck that. He's one of the most famous people alive. The, the impact that like Mike Tyson had on so many people's lives. And not me, because like I was, I was like five when he retired. You know what I mean? You were your dad's balls when this guy was fighting. In, in his prime. Yeah, basically. Like, I, I didn't fucking... But even then, like getting to hear stories of my dad I'm watching my, highlights. Yeah, my dad was a huge boxing fan. He would tell me about like we'd be playing like fight night when I was a kid and be like, Yeah, that's Mike Tyson, you know. I'd me and my me and your mom, we'd order fights of this guy and it'd be over in sixty seconds and we felt like we just wasted our money, you know. Like <laughs> Habib talked about that too. Yeah, yeah. So uh yeah, man, a, a, a big piece of history, man. It just it would suck to see him lose and get knocked out. And look, if he loses a decision to Jake Paul, I'd be like, you know what? But but see, Mike Tyson not if, getting knocked out would just break your heart. And I know that fucking asshole is gonna do it. I know he's gonna go for it. You know he is because he can't help himself. Because he's like, and even on Twitter, he's like, "What are they gonna say now?" I was like, "Dude, he's a senior citizen. What are you doing? Like, what, dude? He's the fucking he gets the elder discount when he goes out to fucking eat. What do you mean? If, it, if it's fucking after four, you think Mike takes the elder discount? He's a man of class. He pays a full. No, I'm sure he. I'm. Mike Tyson's a man of class. I'm sure he. I'm sure he does pay full. He probably eats for free. He's fucking Mike Tyson. Oh, yeah. But the point is, is that if he yeah, were, what are you gonna say to him? If he were an unknown man, he could get fucking half off a Golden Corral. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's like, fuck, dude. He, like, dude, Mike could go to fucking Cracker Barrel, get a free meal on his birthday. Dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, he's getting Social Security benefits. No, like, <laughs> dude, yeah, Mike, Mike Tyson's already pulling Social Security. <laughs> He's already got the pension lined up. It's like, fuck, you know, like, oh, so I look, I don't, I don't, I can handle, I didn't want to see an exhibition. Uh, look, I'm not sure which one I hate more, an exhibition or a pro fight. I hate them both equally, I think, because it's like, but you could have lived with an exhibition, but he could still get knocked out of the exhibition, man. Yeah. But like, here's the thing is like, I even said this when we, when we talked about the exhibition, whatever Mike said was going to be an exhibition. I was like, I hate this and I don't give a fuck about this fight anymore, but at least I didn't have to give a fuck about the fight anymore. Now, now you have to have investment. Now I have to be invested. Like, Oh my fucking God, I'm going to have to watch him lose. To what Jake day Paul. is this happening again? What's the day July on? 20th, July 20th. So they have a long time to go and we have a lot of buildup. The first press conference is next week. So we'll see what happens. That's two months. We'll see what happens. But a well, month, month and 20 days. I mean, Jesus fuck dude. month and 19 days, I guess. Texas has no shame, no fucking shame whatsoever. Like I said, they'd sanction a duel if it was possible, <laughs> and that's not even that's straight up. I true, can't dude. get over that. That's true. I mean, it, I, I you know the thing, from they probably one. could sanction a duel, and it would, it, people would pay money for that. Don't give them any ideas. I think they should, <laughs> dude. In like a year from now, we're like, and Triller Fight Club is back in Texas with a duel, because <laughs> <Like just, laughs> they're the ones that would a do duel, it. Is it a duel or a death? 
Huh? Is it duels of death? Oh, what else would it be? Oh, dude, if they had like some pedophiles in there, you tell me people would be dead to see some pedophiles. Like that episode of Black Mirror. Like, uh, well, that was the thing. I didn't even know. You didn't, oh my god, dude, you haven't seen fucking. Okay, my I've, seen, bad. I've seen one episode of Black Mirror. That's crazy. Okay, never it was mind. good. It was good. That, the that's, one a, I saw. that's a spoiler for like season one of Black Mirror. So I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah. Uh, it's like they have like this kid like. This whole I'm actually, fuck it, who cares? We're almost done with this stuff anyway. So it's like the whole thing is it's like this kid like uh like the, you don't know what he did, but somebody's like talking to him like online. He's like, no, go to this location, do this, do that, and eventually he's like, you know what you did, you piece of shit, you know what you did. So he goes to like the woods, and it's another guy there, and then like all of a sudden like a fucking thing comes out of the woods, like a uh, like a arena? drone, a drone with a phone on it, and it's like recording them, and these guys, he's like, now fight, fight to the death. And these two pedophiles fight to the death. And this kid's like 18. But I'm assuming he's looking at, this, looking at some bad shit on his hard drive. You know what I'm saying? And then and then it's like, he's like, all right, you won. Now get out of here. Because the kid wins. He beats the other guy to death. And he gets home. And his mom's like, you're on you're on TV. What did you do? What did you do? And the guy told him anyway that, like, reported to the police that it was a pedophile. It's like, yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> what did you expect? What did you expect, buddy? So yeah, greatest Black Mirror episode of all time. If you guys haven't is seen it, is that your favorite it. one out of all of them? Oh uh, fuck yeah, dude! Because you never really you just knew that this, this kid did some bad shit. Better than Striking Vipers, dude. Striking Vipers is the funniest fucking thing. <laughs> Anthony Mackie, aka who was he? In, uh, Eight Mile. I forget the name. Of oh it. man, Clarence. Clarence. <laughs> you, you gangster. Your real name's Clarence. Yeah, dude. And Clarence lives at home with both parents. And Clarence's parents have a real good marriage. Hey, Striking Vipers just, you know, like, gosh, if we were in a video game and I was a genius. <laughs> just, just putting it out there. Get the fuck out of here, dude. I'll kick you out of my house. Anyway, so we got more news coming up. More boxing news. This one is a fight between two men who are not senior citizens. <laughs> Deontay Wilder, who is booked not hey, one. Hey, Deontay Wilder is closer to 50 than he is to 40. That's... Wait, what? No. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait a minute, how fucking old is Deontay? I, I think like, Deontay Wilder just turned 40, though, right? He's just barely. He's, he's 39. He's barely about to be. Okay, he's about to be 40. Correct. He's so, closer to 40 than he has 30, Josh. Correct, correct. Which means so, in turn, he's closer to 50, which is closer to 60, so he's almost a senior citizen. Anyway, so yeah, I guess you're right. Oh my God. No. So Deontay Wilder is scheduled to fight against Zeli Zhang for June 1st. He's like, fuck it. I'm 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 back, okay. <laughs> so he's gonna fight Zeli Zhang. If he beats Zeli Zhang, he's gonna have to fight the undefeated Jared Anderson, aka the real big baby, on the undercard of Terrence Crawford versus Israel Majidov uh, on August third in L.A. Um, Wait, can you can you repeat the dates one more time for both August third in L.A. is gonna be Jared Anderson. June first in Saudi Arabia is Zeli Zhang. So a bit over two months in between fights for a guy who generally only fights once a year anyway. I- Wait, and the thing is, they can section that fight too because it's uh, it's gonna be overseas, right? Yeah. So well, if he gets blasted out of there, he can just fight again. Well, okay. So hold on. No, his first fight's going down in Saudi. His second one's going down in LA. So they wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. But okay. If it was sense. if it was reverse, you'd be correct. Yeah. But I was, because I was like, dude, what if these don't work out? He, but dude, they could also, dude, it's fucking Saudi Arabia. If they wanted to, they could just be like, all right, a week later, August tenth, you're fighting in Saudi against Jared Anderson. <laughs> Yeah, they're like, we'll switch it up. <laughs> yeah. And look, dude, Jared and look, uh, it's funny. I think they should have done this in reverse. I think Deontay Wilder has a very good chance of being Jared Anderson. And, I, and uh, you know, that's no shot of the big baby. You know, I, he's got some big Charles Martin. He's got some other nice wins. Not major wins, but, you know, top 50 guys, right? And then he should have fought Zhang. Because having him fight Zhang, who's like a former champion, and then like, hey, here's this pretty unproven prospect. It just seems like it's going in reverse for me. Uh, but what do you make of this fight? I'm down for it. I'm cool with it. I'm I'm down with both these fights, man. I I think it's taking a, at least somewhat of a step back is good, and then taking a step forward instead of he's going taking a step forward then back. Yeah. And then probably gonna go forward again. Yeah. So be it. It's just weird. It's just weird. Um, there's no fucking way he fights both these fights. But hey, man. Dude, you're telling me Tur- that he's not gonna go in there and knock out Zayli Zhang in round one, turn around two I- months later and knock out another one, and then call out the heavyweight champion of the world, whoever it is at that time. Look, dude. I'm gonna say this. I have no idea how that Zelly Zang fight's gonna turn out. We're only a month away from that one. I have no fucking clue. Because, like, on paper, if you're Deontay Wilder, there, there's one guy, if I had to pick one guy in the top 10 who I think was the best style of beating, it might be Zelly Zang. Because he's just so immobile. <laughs> like, he doesn't really... Big power, but he's very slow he's and quick. very immobile. Yeah. But at the same time, Deontay Wilder got... I mean, it Joe Spark a much different style, but it's like, dude, he looked washed to the heavens in that fight. Because he had that ayahuasca. 
So I don't. <laughs> jokes aside, he was like, I don't want to hurt anybody anymore. Like before the fight, he was like crying on like like he like, like between whole... that, but then the killer came back. Maybe the killer's gonna come back, dude. Maybe he'll go out there and just knock two dudes dead and be like, yeah, Anthony Joshua, you think he's do, you're he's, bitch he's, ass. Is it doing like you. Robert Helenas? Fucking put him out cold. A rematch with Robert Helenas, dude? No, not a rematch. I'm saying he's. Gonna oh, go okay, you're gonna do him, him like that? Yeah, okay, maybe, maybe. I really don't know. I have no idea how good he is. He's gonna, be, he's, he's gonna fight someone in that castle too. No, <laughs> I have no idea how good he is. I mean, look, I think even if he loses, dude, these, if actually, he loses Josh this is actually just coming in. Deontay Wilder is fighting Haley Zhang on the Great Wall of China. <laughs> Look, dude. Um, I, I, I don't know how good Deontay is. Bruce think... Lee will be in attendance for that one. <laughs> the the corpse of Tommy Morrison is in attendance. <laughs> the ghost. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens. I think he's a very good chance of losing both these fights, but I don't think it really matters. He's going to get a massive payday, and he's such a big name that like if he loses both these fights, you're like, oh damn, three fight losing streak for Wilder. What's going to do? Oh and man, then, but he made like fifty mil. And then and then he goes out there and like faces like I don't even know who fucking uh, Chris Ariola or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets him out of there, you know? Like, who gives a fuck? He, Robert like, Helena's rematch. <laughs> right, exactly. Robert Helena's rematch. We're like, oh shit, he's back! Like, it's just like... Auto he, Valine. He, he's, he's, he's so... He just needs one knock at win. Everybody's like, oh, damn, dude. Wilder. Woo, he's back, you he's, know? He, was, he never left. <laughs> he never left. But, uh, yeah, man. Excited to see, hopefully... Quadrilogy with out. Tyson Fury. Shit, dude. I would, I would watch that. I would watch that. Make it 2-2, um, two, two, go to a fifth one. 3-2. Three, two, three, maybe, three. maybe he'll lose these two fights and then he'll fight Roman Fury. <laughs> Four and oh, Roman Tom, Fury. Tommy Fury. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is a brief story. We're not going to spend too much time on this one, but we, I do feel like we have to send out our, our love and support because it's and it's also heavyweight related. Francis Ngannou, the great Francis Ngannou, um, tragedy in his life, lost his 18-month-year-old son, Kobe, this past week, made a lot of headlines, and then people weren't really sure what was happening because he put up a tweet about like why does god take away it was very it it was like cryptic it was very cryptic but you could tell that the big man was hurting that's the only thing you could tell he was suffering yeah and um yeah so we just you got to send out our support because it was a heavyweight related thing too and it's just yeah i mean do you mind if i read them real quick i have them say yeah if if you can read what he wrote and um you know they always say the worst pain that a, a parent can experience is losing their their child and uh yeah, poor and gone to do. It's, it's such a nice guy, such a soft spoken guy. So this was the first yeah. tweet he said, not the official like kind of I guess release he yeah, did on, go his, ahead, on his Instagram. And he this is as follows. And by the way, a lot of people has pretty much everybody in the combat community has said something. Even guy, even you know smaller like I think I saw Brian Battle even make a comment on yeah. on a post. But like literally Conor McGregor, Anthony Joshua. Uh, Steep, Steep, I think even maybe Michael Bisping, everybody, everybody you can think of yep. have said some some sort of words. So, you know, a lot of people are backing him. But uh, this is the exact quote. He's like, what's the purpose of life if what we're fighting, what, what we're fighting tooth and nail to get away from is what finally hit us the hardest? Why is life so unfair and merciless? Why does life always take what we don't have? I'm fucking tired. Yeah. Very poetic. And very fucking sad. Yeah. I mean... And then the official release. Yeah, the official press statement was too soon to leave, but yet, but yet he's gone. My little boy, my mate, my partner Kobe, was full of life and joy. Now he's laying, now he's laying without life. I shouted his name over and over, and he's not responding. I was my best self next to him, and now I have no clue who I am. Life is so unfair to hit us where it hurts most. How do we deal with such a thing? How can you live with it? Please help me if you have any if you have an idea because I really don't know what to do and how to deal with this. Yeah, and um, you know, I mean, one of the best guys in MMA, dude, and in in in, in sports in general, dude. I mean, if, anytime you see Ngannou, I mean, you're talking about a guy who's just so soft spoken, so quiet for the stature that he he holds. You know what I mean? Um, he could be a fucking asshole, and he's never chosen to be that. So it's just devastating to see that happen to to such a such a nice guy. And uh, from the course I sound off to him, man. I mean, you know, condolences. Like it's just it's fucking terrible. I mean, there's no way there's no way to prepare for like a a death like that. You know what I mean? All sudden deaths are just fucking. You know, it's just terrible, and especially like for a parent losing their their kid. It's just it's horrific. So I mean, you talk about a guy who's like never given up on life, you know, and like always like everything he's ever had, he's had to fight for. Uh, even now, you know, and, exactly. you know, now when things are going all well to like have 
another thing happen. It is probably the most demoralizing, heartbreaking thing in the world because I, you know, and obviously, like anybody, I think any parent would say this if this happened to them, you know, they'd be willing to give up anything to have uh, their loved one back. This, this one, this one hit hard, man. Yeah. This one hurt a lot to even see, you know, uh, I know we're not parents, we're not, we're not anything like oh, that, yeah, but, no. but you know, you know, we can, we can only imagine how bad it is. And I, I, I don't know, and especially right now, right? Because he's coming off his loss, he's scheduled to fight, you know, he's having all the easy. His life is so active and proactive, and people love him. And he's had he's having lows, and then he had this just massive hit. It's just it seems like it's just too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you just got to feel for the guy. It's just it's just terrible. I mean, I don't I don't know what else to say out uh, outside of that. Um, it's just terrific. So feel for Ngano, condolences, and yeah, I hope hope he's doing well, man. I mean, that sort of thing you need a great su- uh, support system for. You can't really prepare for that. Um. I think we should go ahead and move on though. Um, the the couple just a, a couple more quick things to talk about before we go ahead and head out, man. Uh, Justin Gaethje broke his silence after his knockout loss to Max Holloway at UC three hundred. Uh, there were some people who were like, you know, he's going to retire, you know, because he said before the fight and and for the last year or two, he's like, I'm on one final title run. If I don't win the title, I'm done. If I lose again, I'm done. That's not the case. He is, however, going to take off six months uh, after this loss. He said he has no plans to compete. Until the very end of the year, maybe even next year. Probably December to start um, next year. But he did say that he still thinks he has the skills to become champion, and that's still what he's going for. Dang. So <laughs> it reignited in him. Yeah, man. I mean, and look, dude, Justin Gaethje is still a fucking dog. Um, an all time great, a former interim champion, former W uh I mean, you know, PFL slash World Series of Fighting Champion. You know what I mean? So uh an all time great, and that's the right call for him. What do you think? Yeah, no, I mean, it's not too much of a shock. But it's nice to see the official statement and know that he is going to take that proper time off. Um, but yeah, I imagine December, early next year, which is makes a lot of sense. It's kind of what we expected. Uh, but you don't want to get that out there to people, let them know they didn't, hadn't seen it or didn't know. Mm-hmm. I'm just to see how he comes back. Yeah, It'll be a little while before we see him highlight again. And flow side, you know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little while, but we know we're going to get there. Yeah, for sure. And excited to see him back, man. I still think he has a very good chance of not winning the title, but remaining a top title contender. Yeah. And there's no shame in losing to the great Max Blessed Holloway. So, oh, yeah, the Rocket today. Got a rock, Rocket today, man. So, yeah, man. Shout out Justin Gage. Hopefully he can uh, come back, put some other fun fights together. Two quick things before we go ahead and get out of here, man. Uh, Joaquin Buckley got his fight, but not the main event. Walking Buckley riding a hell of a winning streak, man, and called for that UC St. Louis main event because, you know, let's be honest here. It's not like it's world beaters. It's Derek Lewis taking on Roger Gudasamento, two top 15 barely heavyweights. <laughs> uh, barely heavyweights or barely top 15? But yeah, right. Definitely heavyweights, barely ranked. Let me put it like <laughs> that. Uh, he gets the fight. Co-main event, Norlston Rozabidov. Apologize for mispronouncing that. 2-0 and in the UFC. It looks like a killer. 6-6. Six six, and you're gonna be fighting Walking Buckley, who's like five nine. Yeah, big height disparity, but don't worry. Did you see his video, Walking Buckley? No. Put up a video on uh, Instagram, I believe, and he's like, "Yo, I heard my uh, opponent, uh, Rozabiov, or some 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 or something." <laughs> you he probably said it in a funny way. Yeah, mis- completely mispronouncing. He's like, "I know he's six six, so I got some big hitters with me. Well, how big are you?" He has like a row of like thirteen dudes. He's like, "How big are you?" I'm six five. I'm 6'6". Six, six. I'm 6'4". Six, it's like all these dudes. He's like, yeah, I got the big boys with me, so uh, we're not going to have any problems at this training camp. It's like, dude, I love Joaquin Buckley. Dude. I fucking <laughs> love Joaquin Buckley, bro. Straight up. It, you know, it's so weird that he went on JRE, somehow got onto JRE. It makes sense, though, because, dude, you're talking about a guy who's just fucking... He's everywhere. Right he's mar- he's marketable. You know, he's marketable. very marketable. So, uh, he's banger fight. Too. Honestly, I wouldn't have thought about this fight, but it's a banger, dude. It's weird because uh, Nurlson is fought at 185 in his whole time in the UFC. I don't know if he's fought at 170 outside of the UFC. Uh, I don't know either. But I we'll won't. see. Yeah, I mean, definitely uh, an odd booking. But it's one of those ones that, too, that like whenever you think about it, you're like, okay, you know what? I like that. You know, I like that. Yeah, fight. I mean, I'm, I'll watch it. I, it is like I said, the, the fact that he's dead. Norlson's fighting at 170 is throwing me a little bit off because every fight I've seen him in India, UFC has been at 185. I don't know if he's ever fought. He's it. fought at welterweight before. He's as uh, regularly though. Uh, according to this, according to his wiki, he actually bounces around a lot. Okay. Super welterweight fight, middleweight, welterweight, 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 middleweight, 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 welterweight, middleweight, but mainly middleweight. 
mainly, but he has competed a fair bit at welterweight. Okay. God, dude, this guy's had since 2014. When, when he, that's had, when he debuted. Yeah, since 2014, this guy's had 46 fights. He's 10 years ago, and he's only going to have more because he's only 30. Exactly. So, and he just picked up a winner at Sajik Dumas. So, you know. how many how many fights did you say? Two and zero oh in the UFC. No, how many fights does he have total? Oh, 46. Too bad. End of his career, then have almost 60. Apparently, he's apparently he's a boxer too. Apparently, he boxed two and zero. Oh. Two and zero oh, back in 2022. Not even that long ago. No. Shout out to him, man. Yeah, man. Very interesting guy. This is a banger matchup, dude. I'm really excited for this fight. It's it. I I get why they probably didn't put it as the main event because you know. One of them's not ranked. The other one's well, also, they go by weight class. Yeah. So sometimes. Yeah, that's true. Too. They they like to like they like to say that whenever it's like a fight that like people they know. <laughs> it, it it depends. You're not wrong. Yeah, it definitely does depend. But I mean, banger fight. Uh, I think they should have given the main event, but that's just me. Um. Now, are you ready to move on to BKFC? Yes, sir. Okay, BKFC Knuckle Mania Four went down over the weekend. Uh, some of the highlights, including uh, included Todd Duffy falling over and losing by knockout. Um, Mike Perry flattening Tiago Alves, and then who retired post fight? Mike Perry, I believe five and zero in BKFC now, beating some dogs. But not only that, the biggest news of the night: Conor McGregor is now part owner of BKFC. That one came out of nowhere, really out of nowhere. But it's one of those things that when you think about it, it does make sense. Um, because he wanted. I remember back, dude. I saw a meme. Yeah. It was like, damn, Conor had to buy a BKFC just to fire Arden Love off. Dude, Artem hasn't Artem hasn't fought in twenty since twenty twenty two, I believe. So I mean, that, it, yeah, Artem was getting fucked up too everywhere. Yeah, yeah, he fought that guy who was like a Ukrainian fucking like gold medalist at the Olympics, who's now like a world champion in boxing. Yeah, he fought him in bare knuckle, and like it went how you would ex- expect it. Like, dude, well, what a Chad for fighting in bare knuckle though. Yeah, dude. Oh my god, I I remember whenever they booked that fight, I'm like, what the fuck is Artem <laughs> doing, dude? Like, what are you? He needed money. Yeah, well, he didn't get he didn't get his proper twelve money, so now he. <laughs> He got robbed out of it. Yeah, uh, Denny's Bernicek is who I was thinking of. 18-0, and 0, WBO International Lightweight Champion. Beat Anthony Idgett last time out. Going to face Emmanuel Navarrete for the vacant WBO light, lightweight title. What was that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he, later just, this he, month. he was, he was he got a big fight coming up. Yeah. that he, And look at that. Him right there against I, Artem Lobov. Did you only have only one bare knuckle fight? Correct. And it was against Artem Lobov. Yeah, it just took a one off. He's like, fuck it. You know? Chad, how old is this guy? I, know he's, I think he's, he's on the older end, thirty-five. Yeah, yeah. But I won't believe he was a former. He was not a gold medalist in the Olympics. He was a silver medalist at least. Olympics. Very impressive. So, anyways, yeah. I mean, uh, Connor, man, I wasn't that surprised about it because I remember back in twenty sixteen, whenever he was like making so much money for the company and he just beat Eddie Alvarez in New York, he's like, yeah, you know what? All that I'm doing, I want a piece. I want a piece for how much I'm doing for this company. And you see, we're like, get, yeah, get the fuck out of here, dude. They can afford to give Connor like one one percent, and that'd be. They, it. I mean, fuck, dude. I mean, actually, though, if you really wanted, I mean, they were a public company. You could have just bought some stake in Endeavor, I guess. But, 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 it, but it would have costed so much to yeah. get it, and he wouldn't have had like a significant amount. You're right. You're right. So I that's mean, what I'm saying. They could have given Connor two percent, three percent. Yeah, but they just, you know, how they are. And that's not even like that's not gonna hurt him. You know what I mean? No. Connor doesn't have but power that's, with that percent. But, but that's exactly it. It's that's exactly it. It won't hurt. Them, but they don't give a fuck. No. Because no, they have no reason to change the rules. No, no, no. You're it's not. like how it's like how fighters, fighter pay just keeps on and they got no reason to go otherwise. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So uh yeah, man. I mean, good for Connor, I guess, man. I mean, that now that makes sense why he's been showing up to some of these shows, you know, in BKFC. Yeah, I mean he has some interest in it, and he, it seems like he'd like to do it in some capacity at some point if he was allowed to, or you know what? Andrew, I want to gun to your head right now, okay? Does Conor McGregor, before he retires, does he compete in BKFC one time? No. Not you think anymore. no? Not anymore. You think if he was like five years younger, he'd do it? I don't even think five years younger, dude. I think he's just a little younger. He probably did. I mean, like three, two. Yeah, you might be right. Well, he he's, he's uh, 35 years old as of now, so... Probably got realistically five years before he hangs it up. But he's also said he's also said that he's gonna be one of these guys who's like, yeah, I'm never gonna retire. Like I'll ha- I'll take one off fights basically, like forever exhibitions, you know. Yeah, but we'll see. You I think mean, he'll do the Floyd thing exhibition here, exhibition there? I think I think once he gets out of his UFC contract, which after Chandler, it's only one more fight. I think shit's gonna get very interesting. You know, you think that the UFC would lay the fuck out of that? Uh, well, that's what they did for this fight. So yeah. Yeah, they'll delay the fuck out of it. I think after Ch- after he fights Chandler, unless they see him. how much 
Connor brings in again. Exactly. And and also if he shows, he's like, Hey, I'm willing to sign a deal before I go to free agency. But he straight up said, like, I want to go to free agency. Yeah. So um and it's not even because he wants to leave the UFC, it's just because he kinda wants to let's see what he wants to do there, his own yeah. thing. And he's already making so much money he doesn't need the UFC. Exactly. He doesn't. And I think they both know that. <laughs> so um yeah, we'll see. But I think I think Connor I actually think he might do it. I think he's crazy enough to do it. Against, he could. Maybe not Mike Perry, because Mike would probably fuck him up. Uh, but against a guy who he can beat, I could see him doing it. So Nate. Nate, maybe. Maybe he'll do Masvidal. You can pull out Jake. Jake wouldn't do bare knuckle. I think Jake would do MMA. I don't think he'd do bare knuckle. No, he's very good. But, um, yeah, I mean, look, dude. Good for Connor. It was a solid card for BKFC to continue to grow. And overall, thoughts about that card outside of the Connor part of it. I mean, it was all right. It had its issues. Like I said, no one even mentioned how the pay-per-view became a shit show because it had three fights and an injury. Yeah. Uh, Lorenzo Hunt hurt his elbow. Which, to be fair, that shit was ridiculous. It was, you, you could yeah. see it. This shit was wild. Uh, there was another one in there I can't remember off the top of my head. And obviously, he had the Todd Duffy one, which was weird because – he didn't. It seemed like he didn't want to fight anymore, and then he like pointed at his shoulder or something like that. Dude, it was the most Todd Duffy shit I've ever seen. Did, in my the life. Julian Lane fight too ended in some sort of injury. I believe did he, he didn't win. Did he? I don't remember. Oh shit! Julian Lane didn't lose, but the fight didn't continue because something happened with this opponent. I'm not sure what it was, and then the Mike Perry win happened instantaneously. So you know, I think he won actually. Maybe he won, but it, but I think it's because the person got injured. Hey, hey. <laughs> Baby, we take a win. What happened? What did it say it happened to the guy? It just says Dr. Stoppage. Okay, so that's what it was. Dr. Stoppage! Yeah. I mean, the only issue now, Josh, and it's something people have been bringing up, it's like, who is Mike Perry going to fight next in the BKFC? So, you know, you got to find up opponents. Yeah. Okay? And they're kind of out. I mean, Darren Till is like the only option, but looking past Darren Till, though, like, who else do you have? Bryce Hall. No, fine. <laughs> no, dude, Bryce Hall and Taylor Holder have to have their magic yeah, BKFC. Yeah, sure. Jokes aside, I mean, I think Darren Till makes so much sense, but I, Darren... I think Darren's just done fighting. I don't think he's going to admit it, but I think like he wants to parlay that into like some crypto shit or some. He posts a lot of weird shit on Twitter. I'm not, I don't know. He, he's had uh, fuck, dude. It's crazy. He hasn't done like karate combat or some shit like that. I think that would require him to fight, and I don't think he. I don't think he's very. <laughs> I mean, he like he like requested his release. I've never seen anybody fuck up their career more than Darren Till. I mean, he requested his release from the UFC, and he's like, and yeah, they I gave would. it to him, and they gave it to him. And he, you know, he, he nearly beat Drikus Duplassi in his last fight. He gets, he leaves because he wants to do a boxing match. And then, but the issue is he didn't think about the fact that he had to set up one of these boxing matches. He has to call people out. He has to talk shit. I guess he just assumed one of the Pauls would want to find him and they didn't give a fuck. Yeah. KSI didn't give a fuck either. So now he's got Mike Perry calling him out, but he didn't want to fuck. Why the fuck does he want to fight for BKSC? That seems like a shitty deal. You know what I mean? Get, get your face fucked up. Not going to get as much as a boxing match. Probably get comparable money to the UFC. You know what I mean? So it's like he really misplayed that whole thing. But for Mike Perry, it's basically Darren or exactly. So um, CM Punk, CM Bear, are you down? Maybe they'll find Floyd Mayweather's old ass out there. Let's see. Let's see what he's doing. <laughs> Anderson Mike, Silva's kid. Mike Perry against <laughs> against Anderson Silva's kid. I like that. You know, fuck it. Um, anything else we talk about before we close out of here, man? No, man. This. That's it. I'm just excited to come back, though. Let's see what Steve Versick does. Let's see yeah. what Jaime Munguia does, what Canelo does, what Jose Aldo does. A lot of dogs this week. But man. the real fight of the week, Anthony Smith versus Vitor Petrino. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm I'm on, at Josh Shivan on Twitter. He's at Angel Ortega underscore 01 at Court Sight Sound for all things related to the show. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Um, thank you for 1.5K and 800 thousand views big week for us so we really appreciate it hope you guys enjoyed peace and butt grease no mouse click